Hey, and welcome to the show. It's time for Tea for Ten. We've got Tea Chat talking about uh, tea history tonight. So okay, get out your notebooks. You might learn something. And we'll talk about other stuff. You know, there's American election and a, and a big storm and, and other, other stuff we can talk about. And uh, we'll start out by uh, saying hello to the people in the room. Janice, uh, how the hell are you? Oops. I'm well. Sorry, just unmuting myself. I'm well. Um, relatively benign weather here on the West Coast. So, um, rain and it's starting to uh, starting to look green here again. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Great Canadian chef. We're we're very lucky to have her, Janice, here with us for great advice and maybe even give us a tip on a. Uh, an alcoholic drink that you make with tea. Okay. To pass on to our washers. How's it going, Jennifer? Absolutely fabulous. Terrific. <laughs> <laughs> Making has got a, a a pun queen nipping at her at her heel. <laughs> Yes, I'm looking forward to creating another illustration based on our lovely little hangout. Yeah, I'm glad you do those. They're so nice. I love your style. And you've got a very distinct style, too. I mean, you can right away, you can tell it's a Jennifer Cook. <laughs> that's, that's what you aspire to, I think, as an artist, is to have that recognizable look where people go, that's, that's a Jennifer Cook. Actually, I, I, I aspire to do the complete opposite of that. I try and do things as differently as possible. And I, I may progress in different style areas, but I have about six or seven different illustrated styles that I, that I use. Mm -hmm. Just I think common. Maybe once you've established a style, that's when you can move on and start diversifying. <laughs> but I think if you start out with too many different characters, it could sort of spoil it. I suppose it could. So, uh, uh, May King, Hello. beautiful hat, You're looking lovely tonight. Thank you. Um, uh, it's uh, Melbourne Cup Day today, so lots of uh, folks in Australia have a bit of flutter on the horses. Um, and so, um, yeah, I had a meeting this morning with a girl on Skype, actually. Oh, I said the S word. And uh, she said, why don't we wear a fascinator instead? So I said, oh, cool, why not? So. So here I am with my fascinator for Melbourne, Melbourne Cup Day. Did you did you convince her that, that hangouts are better than Skype? Oh well, one step at a time. <laughs> How are you, Paul? I'm good. I'm real good. Nice, nice day Actually, in Brisbane. Well, yeah, because when we used to do these earlier, it was winter here, and now I'm sort of feeling good. I'm in the shorts and my thongs and feeling nice and Australian and warm. So it's good. I'm, I'm loving it. <laughs> love the heat, love the warmth. Some of our, some people. Now do we need to explain thongs to non-Australians? Yeah, you better. I'm just wondering. Yeah. Yeah. It's a flip -flop. Those yeah. are flip-flops, man. That's right, flip-flops. Yeah, I just thought I'd make that clear. <laughs> we used to call them thongs when we were kids, and then they made those fancy pants that were also called thongs. And then we stopped calling them thongs. That's it. And then this, it was and this. associated with underwear. Yes. <laughs> so I'm definitely not wearing one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but you good. never know. Underwear? That, 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 would be, that would be the hangout down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> And Pauline, my sister, Pauline, making her first hangout appearance here for uh, for T for Ten. I love my sister dearly, and I'm so happy to see you here, Pauline. Say hello. Thank you very much. I'm usually not able to be on the hangouts, even though I've been interested in it, because it's just too late at night when I'm in Denmark. But now that I'm visiting Canada, it's a possibility. Yeah, yeah. So great opportunity to join in the fray. The wild bunch here on Monday night. The wild, wild bunch. So, Colleen, um, I'll ask you: Do you dunk or not? <laughs> on occasion, I do. 
<laughs> if it's something that doesn't crumb too much. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. So another dunker on the team. I, Holly, <laughs> did you know that? I ask, I ask everybody if they dunk or not. Yes. Janice, I've... right on top of it. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to know much. <laughs> Just that. So dunking, yeah. Do you do you like ginger crisps like I do for dunking? Oh, can't get them in Denmark. Oh, really? Mm. But you know the ones I'm talking about. Though. Yes, I know. Yeah. What was our dad's favorite? Oh, that's sorry. Why, that's why they were around so much. All right. And so there's Li Chao, first time. Is your microphone working? Oh, hi. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. And where Where are you at? Oh, uh, where do I live? Yeah. Uh, I live in uh, Rose, no, Los Angeles, California. All oh, right on. Well, welcome to the show. Uh huh. Uh, thank you. Are you your your tea drinker, I guess. Yeah, I drink uh, green tea from China. Mm -hmm. I have one. I, I show you. Hold on. Okay. We'll wait. Okay, we normally take a screenshot, and so it's good for everybody to have their cup and stuff to show. Oh, no, that's not my cup. So there's an election going on. Big, big news tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What do we got here? Mm -hmm. Green tea, uh huh, in bags. In a box. Yeah. yeah. That's a box. Good stuff. Box. I'm still trying to work out what horse is going to win the Melbourne Cup. Oh. Uh, <laughs> speaking what, of races. <laughs> so you can put money on it, or? Yeah, oh, it's a big. Well, it's even for people that don't gamble. It's the Melbourne Cups, like the where everyone sort of. To, tunes in to this one race. Really? Mm. And fancy hats too, like Kentucky Derby. And oh yeah, Melbourne. it's a great, great, yeah, exactly. So yeah, is Melbourne. there a drink that, that people drink as well? Oh, <laughs> never stop. It's <laughs> 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 Australia. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, they have, I, I'll have to look into it. I'll probably, um, I'm not really clued up on that. My king might know. No, I don't actually. I've never been to a Melbourne Cup. Um, so, yeah. But it's Might an Australia-wide thing, isn't it? It's in Melbourne. Yes, it is. We all, we all seem to suddenly become these raging gamblers <laughs> <laughs> from all around Australia. I don't know why. I don't know why. One well, day speaking of gambling. Of, a, a tough gamble is, is the American election. Let's talk about a close one. Uh. And it's not like I want to talk about politics, but, I mean, I do love politics, and... And uh, it has nothing to do with tea, but uh, it's it's tomorrow's the election, and it's a uh, it's the most followed election in the world, right? So, thought I would at least bring it up momentarily. And I what are that. the commentators saying? Um, I mean, the the debates were pretty amazing. Um, what what's the general feeling? Do people know? Oh, Lee, just... um, what what are people saying in the presidential elections at the moment? What's happening in the news? Yeah, we only we only have one American here. Lee? Lee, have you what gone out? What happened? I can't hear. Oh. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's okay, we were just talking about politics. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what happened. Um, yeah. I mean, the stuff we've been reading out here suggests it's pretty close right yeah. now. Like yeah. close enough that things like um, the lack of ability of advanced polling and some of the storm affected areas could mm -hmm. make a difference yeah um margin yeah. of error is, is yeah. Like, yeah talk about like like sunday voting has been eliminated in uh, florida i think and a lot of black voters typically vote on sundays and yeah. um, they've tightened up the availability of advanced voting and they're saying things like that could make a difference yeah. in the final result i know there could be quite a bit of wrangling after this one yeah more than yeah. just, uh, more than just. Do you want? Do you want to? Uh, are you hedging bets? I, I know. I think. No. I, I think. I know who's going to win. Cool. 
Push the loop. Push the loop. Push the loop. Push the You're in Australia, so it's tomorrow there already. We've been on two flies crawling up the wall, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, so no, I, who, think, uh, I think, I, think yeah, I, have, I have noticed that that um, sort of passions are much more inflamed. I think this time around, um, and I don't know if it's because the two sides are a little more polarized than in previous elections. I think that is it. I I found kind of as a as an outside commentator, I you know people, it's it's very easy to sort of provoke very visceral reactions. So, I mean, I have my own opinions about things, but I've kind of been a little hesitant to speak as vocally as I might have yeah. otherwise. Yeah. Plus, it's, we're Canadians. So. <laughs> we can always fall back on that. I don't think I've ever actually apologized from my point of view, but <laughs> um, there have been a couple of conversations that have sort of unfolded on my thread around U.S. politics, which I don't post a lot of political stuff that have kind of set me back on my heels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a biggie. It's a biggie. If the, the election were held around the world, I mean, Obama would be a clear winner. But in the U.S., it's, a, it's tight as it gets. It's definitely the case in Denmark that people are very pro-Obama. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Definitely all of Europe. Yeah, pro probably worldwide is the probably 75% Obama, like 10, 15% Romney support. Yeah, I, I'm voting for Obama because I got a large uh, refund from last year. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it. <laughs> very large. I, I make very little and I get a lot, a lot uh, this much every return. <laughs> so. mm. well, I, ju I judge a country by how well they treat their citizens. And, and, uh, I'll and vote for that, Obama. So. Yeah, if that's a reflection of it, then sure. I think he's a tea drinker too, wouldn't he be? <laughs> no. What does he do? You know, you know, tea for ten. Tea for ten just passed the White House, eh, on the, the popularity list. No. Nah. <laughs> uh, excuse me, I'm cooking. So. I think if he keeps but hanging tea. around with Bill Clinton, he might get into trouble. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's where the the tea liquor. Comes. He's really popular still, isn't he, Bill? Oh, oh, yeah. Very Man, he's uh, like a rock star over there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I came here for uh, find out what you guys are talking about teas. I'm very I'm a curious person, mm -hmm. and at the same time trying to relax. I have not been relaxed all day, so uh, like a 20 minute break and back. <laughs> no. Oh, it's nice a real laid back bunch here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm nearly asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I was very busy today, so now I'm sitting down. I'm so happy. So I, mean, I don't want to miss out. Last time I tried to join and I missed out. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I want to know what's, uh, what you guys are talking about, the tea. Yeah. So yeah. now you guys are talking about election. Yeah. <laughs> Big news, right? <laughs> I like to get to the news first. I'm, I like, oh, it's, it's, news. it's how I start my day. You know, my home page on the computer is, is the news and and that's, that's always how I start. I'm, I'm a bit of a news junkie, I guess. So it just feels right to start even a tea show by talking about if there's any you know big events going on, like you know Hurricane Sandy, second most uh, expensive uh, disaster since Katrina. So a and lot, I've seen lot some of amazing posts this morning on um, Facebook. Oh gosh, I said the F word. <laughs> no, oh no. Um, but bringing it back to tea, there's been um, some amazing American tea companies who are offering their services to, you know, make cups of tea and to raise um, appeal for donations for Hurricane Sandy, which yeah. is just absolutely wonderful. So it really is, you know, tea is really bringing a community together. Um, and uh, and yeah, I, I just found that absolutely wonderful. So a few of my tea friends in the states were uh, mentioning what what kind of things they were doing, you know, to get donations. So um, so I was sharing it out to you know to my American friends and appealing for uh, help uh, I, I to get donations too. I know that everybody drink everybody here drink tea, right? Yeah, including myself. 
right? So it, he, he is antioxidant. So it's uh, all of us look so young. <laughs> That's right. I'm actually 80 years of age. I'm actually 25. All of us, it's like, it's like wrinkle-free. Look at, no, everybody you have no wrinkles. Look at that. We all got yeah. key, the wrinkle-free, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll sleep in the fridge, though. <clears throat> you sleep in the fridge. <laughs> I'm wrinkle-free, too. I drink tea, you know. You're beautiful. You really are. Um, uh, I don't have makeup. So uh, I'm natural. <laughs> I drink tea. So I, all of you too, I guess. So. Yeah. It's it's good for your skin, right? Right, making. I, it yeah. is. Yeah. Yes. I mean, Lee, Lee's right. You know, tea's got uh, antioxidants in it, and antioxidants uh, are vitamins and minerals that help to prevent our uh, the damage that uh, free radicals can do. Uh, to our bodies and free radicals can lead to conditions like wrinkles which are serious for us uh, women um, but uh, more and serious it cleans the um, here it cleans the tummy you know for loose weight the, the, that's not another part of it yeah well I mean I think that we need to be careful about the um, health claims of teas because yeah yeah um, there isn't a miracle cure for tea <laughs> um, it can help, um, but only as part of a healthier lifestyle. So you can't just drink tea and lose lots of weight. You probably could uh, quickly, but then you'll get very ill. So you know, in Chinese culture, I've I've been brought up on um, you know having a lifestyle. It's all about balance. So you know, I mention in a lot of my talks that I love my food, I love my tea, but I don't like exercise so much, which is why I'm not Victoria Beckham sized. Um, but I'm, I'm okay with that. But really, to have a healthier lifestyle, to lose weight, you have to do all those things. You have to eat well, drink well, uh, get plenty of sleep, and also yeah. exercise. So, not tea can't just, you can't just drink tea and expect a miracle. It's a degreaser. But it can help. Tea is a degreaser. You know, you, drink, you eat and you drink, and then degreaser inside of your intestine. Yeah, um. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, that's how we stay young, right? <laughs> if you're constipated all the time, all these wrinkles you have. So. That's it. <laughs> That's true. Oh, I my agree. Lord. Speaking of what? Tea, what? No, I what? I agree. Uh, did they say something true. wrong? No, that's he didn't. It's no. funny. No, it's funny. Before, no, you before didn't. We, oh, we all need to laugh. We all yeah. need to laugh, right? <laughs> Let's keep it moving. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> It's true, though. I think. Well, I agree with you, uh, but but I'm not an expert in any way. But you know, yeah. oh, we're, we're really okay. delving into this topic before yeah. we go any further in to the intestines. I I, 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 I have um, I'm more knowledgeable in uh, health and uh, nutrition, so I, that's why I bring it up. So I also like to well. make jokes out of it. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm laughing myself. <laughs> Four thousand years ago. Uh, the the tea story. The tea story starts in a stat. There's there's like a consensus, right, about, about the the origin of tea. Was this the leaves fell for, into the the boiling water, and th this is like a. Agreed upon, right? Uh, it's written about in in a book, I guess. Uh, the Lee, the uh, Lu Lu. Oh, I forget his name, but the. the, the Tao. Oh, yeah, you know me. Yeah. So um, the story is is that um, Sheng Nong in. Uh, 2737 BC, uh, he was an apothecary, very ahead of his time, and he would actually always boil his water before drinking it. Um, and he always experimented with herbs and this, that, and the other. And it is said that some some leaves from a tea bush fell into his cup. It made a bitter brew, um, and then he realised that uh, it had a lot of health benefits uh, of it. Uh, it's actually not. Um, it is a, a story that is quoted quite a bit, but it's not. Um, oh my uh, God! It it is still a fable. 
um, because there are other stories that have come through uh, of, as to where tea originated. Shen Nong, it is said, is not a person. It might be a group of um, people. Uh, there are some people who uh, who argue that. So the, the jury is still out there as to where tea was originated. But I do love that story. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of other stories which um, I like as well. Um, there's a chap who is um, who is a Buddhist monk, and uh, he was meditating. And one day he fell asleep, and he was absolutely mortified that he broke his um, his meditation. And so he cut off his eyelids um, so that he would never uh, fall asleep again. And when his eyelids fell onto the ground, it grew into a tea bush. So that's a lovely story as well. So as we know, oh, tea well. contains caffeine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and caffeine helps to keep us mentally aw alert. So um, you know that's a lovely little story there. So yeah. Once you get past the bit where he cut his eyelids off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, I find that rather yeah, bizarre. Yeah, not exactly lovely part of the story. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you for that. Thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> um, okay, so where where would we go there from 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 that point? Where's the next most important milestone in the in the tea world after? Oh golly! After I mean, invention? there's just so many. I mean, you know, the, um, tea has a five thousand year history. So, um, I guess uh, tea got um, transported into uh, Japan uh, by way of uh, another Buddhist monk. So, um, a Buddhist was... monk, a practicing Buddhist monk, uh, came from Japan. Uh, loved the Chinese tea ceremony uh, and the practice of drinking tea whilst med med meditating so he actually took some plants uh, over to Japan and um, the Japanese are just you know they're, they're, they're just brilliant at everything aren't they so you know that, that's um, why that's why we, in the British they have morning tea afternoon tea you know morning is like dim sum that's uh, the Chinese way Zhao Cha Wu Cha just uh, morning tea, like dim sum. Afternoon tea, just drink tea. But that's the British way. That's how yeah, I know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, tea is an inherent part of uh, a lot of um, uh, Eastern and Western culture. Um, so was first, so it was first exported to Japan. Yeah, I think it was uh, 800 AD or something like that. I think, um, and then um, as I was saying, that you know, the, the Japanese are just wonderful because they they just take uh, things to a completely different level. So whilst um, the Chinese had a, a, a Chinese tea ceremony where they appreciated the tea leaf and made tea and prepared it, mm -hmm. the Japanese then created their own Japanese tea ceremony, and it's just. It's just a true privilege to to watch because they admire the aesthetics, of the whole room, the um, you know the aesthetics of the teaware that's used, um, the specific steps you need to take in order to perform uh, the tea ceremony, and then of course it comes to the preparing of the tea itself, and then appreciating the tea. Um, so yeah, so that um, so and tea. What, what would that be in minutes? Like a Chinese tea ceremony would be like seven minutes versus twenty minutes for a Japanese one. Oh, I guess it depends on who's uh, performing it. I suppose. No I mean, average, uh, average, average. Oh golly, I I couldn't tell you. I mean, my I do my own personal Chinese tea ceremony. Uh, I call it Chinese tea ceremony with a dash of milk, um, as a tribute to my uh, British upbringing, because um, Chinese tea ceremony for most people is conducted in silence. Um, and for the Western world, they may not understand or, or appreciate what's going on. So I like to give the subtitles as um, whilst I'm performing Ch uh, Chinese tea ceremony, just to explain each step and why I'm doing it. Um, but for each tea, it would maybe take I don't know, approximately, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, perhaps. I don't know. It really depends. Oh, but um, that's but how for long Japanese, it takes before the first person is drinking tea. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, because we need to clean the utensils. Um, we need to prepare the tea leaves. We need to make the you know boil the water, pour the leaves, uh, the water onto the leaves, wash the leaves, which is a, a very important term to wake the leaves up, um, and um, 
and then yeah pour them and then explain to the the attendees how to appreciate what's in their cup so yeah it can take about 20 20 minutes or something like I, that i have a question if anybody could answer it about how um tea was changed from the chinese the, the style of tea that they used to have to it's more burnt isn't it the 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 tea we drink now is it isn't it yeah, so all tea comes from the same bush, um, Camellia sinensis. Uh, so that's white tea, white, green, oolong, black, pu air tea. They all come from the same bush. But it's the way that it is processed that determines the outcome of the tea. So it's just like wine. You may get two um, grapes that are grown in uh, the same grape that's grown in two different countries. And even if you use the same processing techniques to make the wine, you'll get two different outcomes. And it's yes, the same with, true. yeah. So it's the same with tea. So yes. you're right, Paul. Um, back in the 16th century, when tea was first uh, imported into uh, the into the UK, the Brits, us Brits, had a love for Chinese tea. Absolutely loved Chinese tea. Um, and with um, Chinese green teas and white teas, um, it is uh, a non-oxidized uh, category, which means that it is literally plucked. And dried and then le and uh, left in the sun and then dried and and that's it. Um, oh, okay. Now, when it changes colour to the black tea that we come to know and love, there's a process called oxidation. So you know when you cut open an apple and sometimes leave it on the side, and over time it turns brown, doesn't it? Oxidation. Or oxidization. <clears throat> oxidation. Okay. And when, um, and when the uh, apple is reacting to the air, it's changing the color of the apple. Now, if you, were to, if you were to eat that apple that's gone quite brown, it actually has a sweeter taste profile than a freshly cut open apple. So with the um, black tea that we come to know and love, where we add milk and sugar to it, that is 100% oxidized. So that's like oh, okay. leaving the apple until it's completely black. Whereas white and green teas are non-oxidized, so that's like that freshly uh, cut open apple. So that's okay. the difference between the two. Gotcha. <laughs> See, I thought that they actually cooked it and burnt it or something. Is it, that, that's They're, what I've always had in my mind that they did with it for some reason. No, um, there is a, um, a sort of a cooking process with some of the teas. So sometimes the teas are roasted, but it's actually leaving it to the elements or adding heat to speed up the process to make the leaves turn from green to brown to black. So that, that's, that's what's happening there. Hey, and then thank they... you. Thank you. I'm leaving. Thank you. I'll join again next time. No, nice having okay. you. Love <laughs> to meet you, Lee. Okay. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> when the tea, tea leaves uh, are dark. How do, how do you ask this? Oh, top right. <laughs> yeah, Red X. Like There's oh, a phone. Little... little phone. Yeah. Okay. They, they, I don't uh, think they need. If you've got a red X on the window, you don't need the, the exit. No, you don't. Yeah. yeah you just no. Hit the, hit There's the, no yeah. access. How do I access? Click, no, click on the red X. X. You have to stay. <laughs> I don't see any. Oh my god! The oh, red X in the top you right. You know what? I'll close the window. I'll close the window <laughs> and, and then I'll, I'll, I'll return. Okay. <laughs> what a character! Isn't she lovely? We'll be right back with tech and tea after these words. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, history oh, was, of tea then. I was going to ask about the, with, with the darkening of the leaves, does it also get sweeter just like the, uh, the apple uh, analogy? It actually depends on the tea actually. So um, I think that there are, there are other processing techniques that are involved in making the outcome of the tea. So it, it really depends yeah. and also the climate, where it's actually grown. So there are some black teas. Uh, that are a lot that have a lot of a sweeter profile than some other black tea. So, um, you know, Darjeeling, for example, is ever so slightly uh, sweet, uh, but Assam, um, which is another region in India, has a very multi note, and it's just because of the way that the tea is processed. It depends on um, uh, the climate, but they're both black teas. Um, Chinese uh, black teas are actually known as red teas, 
just to confuse you uh, and they have a completely different uh, flavor profile too so it really depends on the tea itself so there must be a point where it can't really oxidize anymore and it just stand just gets to a point where that's that's it like you if you did it too early it wouldn't taste real good probably in that in no i mean um, with the with the white and green teas, as I mentioned before, they are not oxidized at all. So it's almost like you're not cutting cutting open the apple. So they actually stop um, once the leaves are plucked. They actually f uh, dry the tea uh, the tea to make sure that it doesn't oxidize at all. So in order to produce a particular type of tea, we want to have a particular type of oxidation. So it could be 0% oxidation, 10%, 15%, 20, 30. 90%, hundred percent. So, um, uh, oh, oh, losing oh, everybody. Oh, oh. oh. it's the oh. Brady Bunch. Oh no, it's not. Oh. It's, a, it's, an, it's an exodus going on here. My Was it something I said? Should I have asked about the tea? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'll just continue with the history lesson. <laughs> Uh, so uh, eventually the, the Brits got turned on to tea and then uh, they wanted to get some from China. So what they did was they traded heroin for tea and then they That's had the Silk true. Road and then they had opium wars over, over the tea. Oh, making's back. Phew! Okay. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I asked the question was that I was told that when, when the English got the tea Originally, they didn't know what to do with it, so they they cooked it or something, and they had this kind of blackened idea of tea. It just sounds like a bit of a story, really, now, doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> have you got anything that's that's I like that a bit of a story. <laughs> but you get told these things, and you just believe. You know, you just think, oh, okay. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. so May King, are you back? Yes, I am. Okay. Right. Yeah. The last, la your last oh, word was ninety percent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, we're just talking about oxidation levels. So, um, some teas are ninety percent oxidized, and some are one hundred percent. That was all I wanted to say, really. Um, but when I came back on, uh, you were talking about the Silk Road. So, what did I miss? Oh, I was just trying to fill in some history really quickly. I was vamping. <laughs> <laughs> Moving into the original drug cartel era. <laughs> yeah, no, because yeah. I mean, there's a lot of dramatic yeah. history in in tea, and, and, wow. and yeah, I want yeah. I want to hear about it. So, so but I, I, you know, there's there's this the opium wars, and well, uh, and and tea at that point was was used as currency, was it not? Um, yep. So some Pretty of the bad. like the teas that come in the brick form um, were traded for other goods. Yeah, and they were yep. kept in caddies that had locks on them. Yeah. In Australia, Absolutely. we did it with rum. <laughs> <laughs> so, rum runners. Well, that's what amazed me about tea that it was be that it that it had become had such huge importance. It was a really valued thing. Like we go and get a some tea from the shop and make a cup of tea, but some of those um, things like the. The historical, I was reading up on it, um, the wars that were fought, I mean, it's incredible. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's an interesting subject all in itself, isn't it? Yeah. It woke me up to a lot. I, I, I don't know what, I think it would have been your post, actually, Lawrence. It was a couple of shows back, though. Might have been earlier days, I think. Was it the video from the History Channel? Well, I was, well I'm not sure, but I was trying to sort of, you know, Study up a bit just in case anyone asked me. <laughs> in case there was a test. Must <laughs> <laughs> well, have Guy. Guy from Australia doesn't know much about tea. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the show, Guy. Or is it Key? Can you hear us okay? No microphone? First word sounds like. <laughs> uh, it sounds like tea. <laughs> yeah. oh, and, and you've got you've got a shorty there in a blanket. 
conversation. Uh... Yeah, it can relate to the blanket. Yeah. I I have hello kit kitty. What else can we figure <laughs> out? Looks like a North American house. Can't see the outlets, so can't see if it's like European outlets. What else can we tell? We can't hear you he's guys. A he's a ginger. Can you hear us? <laughs> <laughs> He's nodding so he can hear us, but we can't hear you. Yeah. Well, we we can click on his name and we can go check out his profile. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah how about a microphone? Type things in his profile. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, um, guy, why don't you um chat, uh, do a group chat, and then we'll sort of put things through. Um, we'll yeah. sort of mention it on the hangout if you if there was anything you wanted to ask or talk about. <laughs> Do you see the, the, there's a chat icon, you see the chat, oh, 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 oh. oh. Well, he left the building. <laughs> well, he looked happy when he left. That's yeah, he did. He, did. he did. He did. Right, right so where are we going next in the, in the history of tea? Slavery. <laughs> oh. <No. laughs> okay. All right, where are we heading off? Yeah, whereabouts? Sorry, that's my pirate thing. <laughs> <laughs> Arby so was it was it part of the circuit? The um, what was tea exchanged as part of that circuit of when the ships would pick up um, slaves in Africa and take them across? There, there was sugar involved. I know. Um, yeah, I don't think so. I think, lots I think the slavery charges come from like uh, in, in India after the British had like stolen the the, the, the Chinese secrets and and information technology and and and, and workers they uh, they set up tea uh, plantations all around India that were were full of workers who were not paid well enough and I think that's sort of the scandal behind the the slavery sort of side of, of tea history and I believe um, there were a lot of families who were uprooted and sent to the plantations in order to, you know, to uh, work on the plantations as well. I think, you know, there was a lot of that going on. Um, yeah, I'm not too familiar with that side of things, actually. Well, I know um, during the Industrial Revolution, um, tea and sugar, sh sh sugar in tea, um, was uh, sort of made a made a leap from an upper class beverage to something that was fed to the the masses working in the factories as a way of um, placating them. Um, so you could you could sort of stave off some of the hunger pangs by giving them tea and sugar sugar in tea mm -hmm. um, and uh, keep them working longer oh. and um, not give them breaks. Not quite slavery, but not really in great working conditions either. It's getting there. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and how about nowadays? Making? Is there, is there much instances of, uh, of underpaid uh, labor in the TU? Well, certainly with the initiatives like the Rainforest Alliance um, and um, Fair Trade and so on, that, you know, the there's a lot of um, a, a lot of money that's being pumped into ensuring that the plantations are, you know, um, are being monitored in every step of the way, from uh, treating their workers right to the plantation itself, the quality of the plants, uh, the plantation, and the way that the tea is processed and what have you. So, in order to get that fair trade mark, it sort of monitors absolutely everything. So that's good, in a way. Um, but in order for um, a plantation to be certified fair trade, um, they do have to spend a lot of money. So, you know, there will be a lot of plantations who don't have that money, and they could potentially be exploiting their, uh, their, um, the people on there. However, that said, um, there are a lot of family-run plantations, and, you know, um, when I was growing up, I had to work in my parents' business, um, you know, at, since the age of um, six or seven, um, or oh, I shouldn't say that online. I mean, since I was uh, eighteen. <laughs> um, no, I wasn't exploited. No, not at all. Um, no, the um, you know, so Fighting there are a lot of family-run plantations who you know they're, they're making a living. They're making a living, and they you know they have to make ends meet. So they will do everything in their power to make sure that the tea that they produce is of the best quality, so that it can get the best price. So. 
um, you know, it's 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 very difficult as well because um, you know culturally. Um, work ethic and working with the family just has a different meaning to the yeah, Western world compared absolutely. to the Eastern world as well. You know, um, so when you get these um, comments about, oh, you know, this person is working for two dollars a day, and you know, and in the Western world, it's absolutely shocking that you know that people are working, young people are working in in in, in that environment. However. I'm not condoning it at all, but we have to understand the bigger picture, really. Um, Two dollars as a monetary value means so much to, you know, means a lot to different people. You know, two dollars can mean the equivalent of two thousand dollars for some people. So we cannot just look at that monetary value. Um, so from it's experience. from our own uh, perspective. An idea of what we, yeah. Totally. Absolutely. So it's it's um, you know with regards to exploitation, yes, I'm sure it happens, um, but we have to understand what that means. Like I said, I, you know, I worked to my parents' chippy, um, you know, from a very young age, but it was just something we did, you know, um, and I'm I did okay out of it, got a good education, got to university, did a career, started my own business, you know, and I'm okay. So um, I, I worked rather than played, you know, computer games or watched TV and stuff, um, you know, and that's what other kids were doing, so, you know, it's, one has to understand the culture. Mm -hmm. It's quality of life, really, that's most important. Yep, and that's also personal interpretation as well, you know, um, for some people, quality of life is just working, you know, work is their life. For some people, quality of life is going, heading to the beach, hanging out with friends, going for dinner, you know, um, that kind of thing. Like when the so, UN, the UN will will do like a quality of life survey kind of thing, and they'll they they, they look at like 15, 20 factors, right, as far as figuring out where a good place to live is. Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I grew I'm up on. The, I'm getting the balance right now. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up on the farm, and I and we worked right from quite small too. Whether it was gathering eggs or whether it was um, lift, uh, lifting bales or feeding uh, pigs or calves, you just did it. Yeah, absolutely. But it's yeah. that's what you were saying, though, making about um, yeah do, doing it within your family. It's different to the bigger picture where it becomes a, a huge, big business, worldwide enterprise. It's that's a that's looking at it from a really big scale. Yeah. But in your in your family, we were, yeah, same here. We we did just we just did what we did because we had to. There's probably money. Probably a trend coming, as as we're going to see more mobile payments, more people paying with their phones, and more people doing business with their phones and and their devices uh, on on smaller scales, uh, and and with a lot of small businesses, pl small plantations, being able to uh, dig digitally monitor their their uh, their inventory and track their their shipping just like the uh, the big companies so a technology will even the playing field I, I can see and, and uh, will, will it'll help the small businesses compete with those mega corporations Especially you mean, like, mean like a niche a more niche market for people yeah, like like you, you can't go and c compete against Walmart on price, right? But you can you can try and out service them, you know, and, and, and give them same day delivery and, and whatever else you can lay on top of it. But but it'll be technology which will allow uh, these small businesses to compete with those with the companies. That's my little optimistic look. At it. I think it sounds great. <laughs> Like because you'll be able to do what you would do at a normal market, and um, people will be able to access that. I'm all, I'm really all for that. I, I go and buy um, the uh, homemade um, stuff from the ladies, the jam the people and stuff like that. Mm, yes, jam. And if you could do that with tea and coffee, I mean that's the way yeah. to go. 
Yeah, and then people like Square are going to help small businesses organize so that they can they can compete. Yeah, well, Square Square just launched in Canada finally. Um, well, last week or the week prior, mm -hmm. and um, Rogers just announced made an announcement about uh, enabling mobile payments as well. Um, not quite as easily as Square, I don't think, but. Uh, and PayPal apparently has something in the works. Sure, they have got their triangle. Um, yeah, so um, it's, uh, I, I know it's that whole idea of being able to um, purchase goods from market vendors is has been a big piece of uh, uh, community development activity around web infrastructure and Wi-Fi access in many of the communities here in BC. Yeah, that's great. Because I love that idea. All that organic stuff that they call organic now used to be just how it was, like a chicken. Yeah. You got an egg, and then, yeah, an egg, and then it became a packaged thing, and then it became a. Now it's organic. So I mean, you know. Yes, and you can even get the egg in liquid form too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, organic is another uh, contentious uh, subject in the tea community because it's, um, I mean, for, for consumers it's difficult. We want to try and do the right thing. We want to try and be conscious in our buying uh, habits. And so getting that fair trade product off the shelf is, you know, makes it, um, you know, makes us feel good about ourselves and having that um, box of tea that has the organic um, mark on it, it, you know, it's convenient for us. Again, it makes us feel better, but in reality, there's a lot of tea plantations who cannot afford that certification in order to be certified organic. Um, and and so there are a lot of uh, smaller tea growers that are missing out. And going back to the family-based plantations, they're going to do whatever they can to get the best price in the tea. So some of their plantations are more organic than the organic certified ones, you know, but they just don't have that um, that stamp. So it's really important to try and, um, you know, try and buy local as much as possible. So if you buy from a, a tea um, vendor, if you are able to find out where the tea originally comes from, that would be great. And if it doesn't have the hallmark organic on it, it doesn't mean that it's filled, uh, filled with pesticides. And besides, um, the Camellia sinensis plant actually has a natural pesticide on it anyway. Um, caffeine is very, very bitter. Um, and so it actually de um, detracts a lot of um, bugs anyway. So, um, so yeah, um, don't be... I, I fully understand that people do want to go organic, and so there are a lot of tea companies who are striving for that. But just be aware that there are other teas that are not organic; they don't have the stamp, but doesn't mean that they are necessarily full of pesticides either. So, mm -hmm. all right, you got your tea cup uh, ready for the screenshot. Ooh, I've still, I haven't got a fancy cup. I should get one. Fancy <laughs> cup. <laughs> oh, Janice, I love your cup. That's gorgeous. It's a Hello Kitty. Oh, it's cute. That's really cute. And oh, Guy doesn't have a cup. Hello Kitty. Oh. Hi, can, <laughs> Guy, can you go and grab one quickly? Because we like to take a, a photo uh, a photo of us all. Hmm. Right. I don't have, have any got... cool one. You don't have anything? Not any nice ones like this. Oh, oh it doesn't good, matter. Yeah. Don't worry. Jan gonna... Janice, your cup matches my blanket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Did you take the shot, Lawrence? I did. I did. Okay, I did. lovely. <laughs> so one of the things I've been um, trying to find out a little more um, is, uh, I mean, given that we're in Canada and you had people trumping about the wilderness exploring, um, and uh, there's sort of a history of Hudson's Bay. I, I'm convinced there's a there's a link between tea and the Hudson's Bay Company, and so I've been trying to um, see if I can chase down some of the sort of original provisions lists or. or documentation about some of the original provisions lists. Mm. So I know um, there's an author who's written some books about um, sort of the northwest coast of BC. 
who um, has talked about um, kind of the instructions that a Hudson's Bay factor would, was given um, when they were sort of first set upon a particular area and they include things like make sure you plant potatoes um, and uh, building the stockade in a certain way in a certain configuration it was kind of like a little franchise operation almost that you sort of can't you got this book sent with you with this list of instructions um, and I'm convinced that there is like we know that we know that they drank tea so tea would have come as part of the provision so I, I'm trying to chase down um, to see if we can, if there's some documentation around um, how much tea, mm -hmm. <laughs> who it would go to, what kind of what the more detailed instructions would have been around that. That's interesting. It, it might have been a bit underground too, like. A bit of, a <laughs> I bit think of that a, was the whiskey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like tea a and whiskey. <laughs> yeah, but but I know um, from reading from some of the stuff I've read um, that that in fact you know the the instructions were quite detailed, right? That it's like you cleared a certain um, you know like the area that you were sort of told to clear was a certain um, amount of space in terms of you know acreage or square footage or um, and the way that you put up the stockade walls was very quite particular in terms of you know cutting down trees of a certain length and diameter and sticking them in the ground um, all kind of funny um, when you look at the weather on the northwest coast here because as fast as they would put up these stockade walls they'd rot <laughs> yeah they totally would yeah all and it's, but it seems as though kind of the set of instructions like I said it literally was like a franchise um, in that the set of instructions didn't deviate regardless of where you were in the country so you you know like the book would look the same the book uh, of instructions for the Hudson's Bay factor would look the same regardless of whether you were in northern Ontario or northwest coast of BC it's like the standards of uh, yeah. the British soldiers that came to Australia 230 or, or however long ago exactly. they still had to wear they still had to wear their woolen English um, suit, uh, gear in, in yeah. uh, extremely oh, hot. Yeah. Oh my lord! Oh, well, yeah. wool, wool is good. Wool's the best. It breathes. Yeah. It breathes and insulates. It has <laughs> the largest comfort zone temperature wise. That's I'm a true. Huge, huge I wool often fan walk here. around in in the <laughs> summer with a wool. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but if you get wool from sheep that, that are that have short coats, then it's going to be prickly wool. So you need you need to get your wool from sheep with with long coats, so it's thin, yeah. and then and then it won't be itchy. Not a turncoat. Yeah. No, merino merino wool is is the, the best material in the world, and I could go on for the next half hour about merino wool. I love it so much. I love but merino. I, but I won't. I love merino. I do. I like, I, I like a good don't. woolly cup of tea. And and Australia has merino sheep. New Zealand is they're they're really the ones who are most known for the merino. Nope, they're king of the sheep. They love the sheep. Right. Yeah. Love do you have a song? <laughs> All do you have a song <laughs> about sheep? <laughs> <laughs> we can make one up if you want. Oh, is that a segue into the music section? <laughs> <laughs> Where men are men and sheep are nervous. Sorry. Oh dear. <laughs> Oh, are, we, are we finished with history making? Is there anything else we should know about tea history? Oh, there's just so much history, isn't there, really? But, um, but yeah, maybe it's time to have a bit of music, I think. A bit of music, all right. Oh, yeah. This is, this is pretty new, this one. I, I don't know whether to go to studio or not. Sure. sure. Yeah, but yeah. everyone has to mute, apparently, because we'll echo, like, that new of his business. Now, I better check my mic levels. Excuse me, everybody, but this has to be done. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, usually the microphone volume is lower when you're in studio mode. Yeah. So I'll just make sure that you're loud enough. Because the sound quality, the trade-off is worth it. It is? Oh, yeah. It should be all right. It should be all right, mate. Oh, funny. Are you in studio mode now? Yep. Okay. Is that Saint Lawrence? Fantastic. Really great. This is brand new. I don't know where really much. 
much about this song, it just turned up one day. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a moody one. All things beautiful All things strange they come together like a light in the rain. Like finding the difference between tomorrow and today. Fall away, fall away. All things alluring bring me pain But all things that dampen out the heart and the flame The difference between now and tomorrow will still a guessing game With a sidelight shining down on old memory lane All things beautiful, all things strange I sometimes find it hard to differentiate Like a walk in the forest could just be A walk in the rain Fall away, fall away from Fall away, fall away from me. Yeah, all right. Oh, you nearly lost me on that one. Funny nice when you life. forget your own words. <laughs> Did you? Did you forget words? <laughs> but you wouldn't have known, but I yeah, thought I'd tell you. Oh, yeah, the, I, I got into the song and I thought, which song are you doing, Paul? <laughs> 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 no, it's all right. But it's new. Out, it's, right? it's a bit of a moody bit of a moody one, but yeah, I, I kind of like the feel of it. It's got that uh, sort of a, I don't know, bluesy, jazzy. Yeah. Uh, it's smooth and velvety. velvety. Yeah. Smooth and velvety. <laughs> Just yeah, like a good cup of tea. But if you like, I could do a little brighter one. But it's all up to you guys. Yes, definitely. Sure. Okay. You got to change the charge for this. Yeah. <clears throat> Twelve string now. I would, I would, but uh, I think it'd be like about half an hour of tuning up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now this, one. this is, this, you'll like this one. I got green, green grass Sitting down all around me I got the world passing by Blue, blue sky You get the world in your eye When you're singing here Why, why do 
you cry for me? I got everything I want Everything I need Got blue, blue sky. Look at all the stars in the sky. Absolutely. And look at you, beautiful you, beautiful. What I don't have. What I don't have. What I don't have. Well, it's gonna come. Everything I want, everything I need. So don't pity me. Passing by Blue, blue sky Don't cry Don't cry for me Everything I want Everything I want Fantastic. Is it that, that real clapping? Is it? That's, that's <laughs> great. That was that was real clapping. Yeah. No applause sign. Well, th thanks everybody for watching. I uh, hope hope you enjoyed uh, being here and, and watching on on YouTube and um, Janice. Where where can people find you on the internet if they want to catch up more on, on? We didn't get to a recipe. I I, I know I wanted to. Another time. Oh, okay. Ne yeah. Yeah. So, so where can people find you if they want to? Uh, well, they can find me on Google Plus, um, Janice Mansfield, and uh, they can find me um, and uh, links to chefhangout.com um, on my own website, Real Food Made Easy, all one word. dot ca. Real Food Made Easy. dot ca. Very yeah. good. Yes, because food can be difficult. What's that? Food can be difficult, but you make it easy. Uh, well, I like to think I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, well, thanks, thanks again, and uh, we will catch you next time. So, goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye, folks. <laughs>